Okay. I don't know if it's... Okay, we are uh, live at this point, and we are on the YouTube channel here. Welcome, everybody. Glad you could join us today. My name is Sister Liz. I'm a daughter of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul, and we're here, and we're going to be talking with some of the sisters from Paris, which is very exciting that we have the sisters here from the Mother House. I'm glad that you all can make it. Just a quick note, if you want to put some questions up on the YouTube channel, feel free to make some comments or ask questions. You can also tweet at us using the hashtag HolyHangout, and uh, we'll see if we can get to some of those questions. We had a few come in ahead of time, so we're very excited, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to unmute myself. I think I got another problem here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I had another window open. We're going to start with a prayer. I have a prayer here from uh, the words of St. Vincent. So I'll just go ahead and read that for us today. Get us started on the, uh, the right foot here. This is a prayer by St. Vincent. Lord Jesus, teach me by your example. Make me, through the vigor of my efforts, set the world around me on fire. I want to give myself to you, body and soul, heart and mind and spirit, so that I may always do what gladdens you. In your mercy, grant me the grace to have you continue in me and through me your saving work. Amen. So, um, Sister Denise is going to take over here and start off with some questions and introductions. Yes, I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm not in Paris. So, um, Counselor, uh, identify yourself. She's in Paris, France. And then, uh, Arnie is with us, who is also in Paris, France. So, maybe you could start, if you could just um, give a little explanation of um, what you do and how long you've been there. Sister Judith, can we start with you? Uh, my name is Sister Judith. I have been in Paris for a little more than a year. Am I? And I am involved in translation. I hear my sister servant, I think, coming down the hall. She may pop in in a moment. Um, she's French. <laughs> Um, the other people who live in my community are Spanish, um, Brazilian, po Polish, Swiss, but who speaks a Italian. Is that all of us? I think that's all of us right now. We had an Eritrean and another Spanish um, sister here. And so I um, translate um, things for the sisters in the worldwide community, both people who are here um, who come for formation to learn more about um, the Vincentian charism and also um, I do translation work for publications that we have um, and then whatever else people ask me to do. <laughs> Very good. And, um, some of the places you've been, like when the sisters come to visit they travel to some of the sites of St. Vincent and St. Louis. You want to just mention some of those places? Sure. Usually, um, depending on the length of the session, we, we go to different places. And one of the places that's most special is um, the, what we call the berceau, which basically in French that means cradle. And so it's where um, St. Vincent was born. It's in south, southern France, um, kind of near the Spanish border. And um, we, so we go there as well as to Dax which is a city nearby where St. Vincent studied and where also um, a sister was martyred during the French Revolution. We usually also go to Lourdes um, because of the connection with um, the Immaculate Conception. So first, you know, St. Catherine had had um, a greater understanding of the Immaculate Conception through the apparitions here at the Mother House, um, and then um, St. Bernadette had uh, the manifestations at Lourdes, so we go there. I've also been to um, Châtillon, which is the city or town where St. Vincent um, discovered the material poverty of his time and organized what became the Ladies of Charity or the International Associations of Charity um, to help respond to that need. So helping um, connect people and organize them in their 
um, charitable work. I um, also have been to Fernet Moutier with the sisters, which is the tiny, tiny place where St. Catherine Labore was born and where she um, helped her father run the family farm after her mother's death. Um, I have been in Paris and the areas to um, Clichy, which is the first parish that um, St. Vincent de Paul was responsible for, where he discovered how good um, his parishioners could be and where he said he would be even happier than any bishop or the pope because he had such good parishioners. Um, and then various churches in Paris that are related to our founders and our first sisters. Maybe other places. Well, that's that's good. That gives us a good feeling. Oh, in Chartres. In yeah. Chartres. Well, is, thank um, you. Also a great Marian place. Oh, right. Yeah. So one, maybe we'll hear some stories depending on uh, about those trips as we go along. All right, Sister Bernie, how about you? Hi, I'm Sister Bernadette, also Sister Bernie. I, I work here at the Mother House as a secretary for the uh, Superioress General, which some some communities call it the Mother General. Um, I've been here for five years, a little over five years, and um, the there are 20 secretaries for the Superioress General, and I'm just one of them. There are three for the English language, and there are, we have a variety of other languages as well. As many as, of course, there's French, and there's Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, uh, uh, there's what else? It's a German language. Um, the, the, the African sister that's with us, she takes care of the, French, the countries that speak French in Africa. There are um, Polish and Slavic language secretaries. It, it's quite a, quite a mixture of people in, in our group. And, uh, but we have a lot of fun. We, we laugh a lot. Yeah. You know, tease and tell each other jokes. And stuff like that. <laughs> We're a pretty fun group. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, I, I help to go on some of the trips that that we go on to put up. It's a lot of work. Great. I think that Sister Bernie's uh, sound went out there for a second, but we'll hopefully get her back. I'm here. Great. Awesome. I can I hear you now. Yeah. Now, we have the sisters who um, work with those who come for um, the heritage sessions and those who can secretariat work with the international community. I lost the sound. It's a place of uh, great pilgrimage. And and many people come every day for, for um, to pray and to so on, you know, to uh, have mass and many different languages there. So, and then there's so there's many sisters from different countries who also serve in the chapel in greeting pilgrimage. Okay. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yeah, we heard the last part about. Um, the international. The last community. part. <laughs> <laughs> so the international moving at the Chapel of the Miraculous Medal and the pilgrims who come there. So, uh, Dr. Bernie, if your interactions with companies that you would in there, I had a hard time hearing your question, but I heard something about interactions with the people in the chapel and things like that. Um, frequently, that, well, at least couple of times more. Sometimes it's two or three times a week. There, I get a call to come downstairs to the front door and, and greet someone who has come from the United States. Frequently the, the sisters do, who, who work in the United States, they'll have their family may come here or, or they're someone they work with and they ask to see the chapel. And of course anybody that wants to can come to the chapel. Uh, anywhere from three to five thousand people a day come here. And it's because of the apparitions that took place here in 1830. 
And I usually usually bring them in and explain. There's a kind of like a cry room that I take them to, so I can talk in a normal tone of voice. And I usually explain what happened here and tell them about the chaplain, tell them a little bit of the mother house when they come. And that's always really enjoyable. And, and uh, it's one of the one of the incredible things about living here is to see all these people who come. That when you when you're in the chapel, there are people there from whole there are pilgrimage groups all everywhere from Japan, Brazil, from Portugal, from Spain, the United States, Thailand, Japan. It, it's incredible to see the people who come here wanting to see what happened and and they come because of their faith. That, that's that's really really an important thing. I don't know if Sister Judith has any thoughts on that. Yeah, I might add that um, even though I don't tend um, to get as many opportunities to meet with groups or to, um, to see individual people who come, uh, one of the pieces about even though we live in separate communities for, you know, for different things in terms of usually our, our responsibility here, we always, there are times that we share with all of the sisters in the mother house, which include most meals. Um, so often I get to hear about um, one of the sisters who works in the chapel or with more directly with pilgrims telling about the experiences that they have, um, obviously you know respecting confiden confidentiality, but the experiences that they have with um, some of the pilgrims. And one of the things that really touches me is mm -hmm. how many times they tell about how um, they spoke with the pilgrim who came especially to give thanks to Mary. So they may have come here before um, to ask for a favor, to maybe ask for healing or for a problem in their family or um, maybe they didn't have a job and they really needed one. Whatever their situation was, they either had come or they had prayed, you know, wherever they were. But when they felt that they had, um, they had been exhausted, that the Lord had heard them that their problem was resolved or that they were in a better position of peace to accept their situation. They really feel that, so many people really feel that drive to come and, as it were, personally thank Mary um, and thank the Lord for the way that God has acted in their lives. So um, just hearing that so frequently really inspires in me too, you know, that spirit of thanksgiving and recognition. And, um, just knowing how much God works in people's lives helps me see that in my own and helps me see it in, in other people around me. So that's a that's a really big gift in in being here and knowing that those things are happening, that people are coming with that spirit and that um, that they're willing to share it. I think that's that's one of the things. And then too, um, every evening we share evening prayer with the pilgrims um, and. We, we first have our, our half hour of meditation and then um, evening prayer. And almost always it is dead silent during that time of meditation. Now that's something we might expect in our, in our chapels, in our kind of ordinary individual um, communities. But um, with so many people and people with kind of all different experiences, you know, people who are used to praying silently and others who maybe only know praying out loud, but the beauty of, of, the, of the way that silence is respected and both people who come and who don't know what's going to happen and just are there and participate and others who come day after day um, who live in the neighborhood or um, who come in specially and are just are ready to pray and ready to pray in community. Um, uh, that's another great gift that we that we have here. I have a quick question that came in from um, uh, a woman named Kathy, and the question is about um, Saint Catherine Labore and how she is incorrupt, and then also whether Saint Vincent, Saint Louise, who are there, are incorrupt. So that's that's a curiosity question that came in. Okay. Uh, uh the body of St. Catherine is incorrupt. She is in, in the chapel. She is located at the site where Mary appeared to her on November 27th for the miraculous 
for the miraculous metal, to give her the miraculous metal and to have it made. And her body is incorrupt. The bodies of St. Vincent and St. Louise, St. Louise is in our chapel, uh, but St. Vincent is maybe in American speak, he's about three blocks from here, um, in the, the chapel of the Vincentian priests. But their bodies are not incorrupt. The, they have taken their skeletons and put them back together, and then they put a wax figure over them to represent mm -hmm. that they were that were at once a, a, a living, breathing person. And they, you know, there were no Kodak moments in 1660 when they died, so they don't have photographs of them, but they have paintings and drawings. So in St. Vincent, they had a death mask exactly, so they know exactly what he looked like at the moment that he died, but um, yeah, so they, their lives are there. That, that's a, to me, is a tremendous honor yeah. to have all three of them. You know, it's, to be able to sit there in front of St. Louis and, and pray and ask for her intercession for the needs of our community or for the needs of the poor or, or whatever is present, you know, the moment that someone has asked us to pray for, because we receive those too. We receive a lot of requests for people, please pray for my cousin, please pray for my aunt or my nephew or whomever. And and we go to the chapel and, and we pray for those people. I mean, frequently if somebody sends me, you know, a request for prayer, I write it down immediately on a piece of paper and I go to the chapel because there's a basket in the chapel for it to put the petitions in. And I, I put it there right away because otherwise I'll forget. <laughs> but, you know, the... the um, but I, I do that right away when someone sends yeah. something to pray about. It, it's, but I mean, that answers your question, I and mean, I think about the bodies of Catherine and Vincent Louise plus a little bit. Yeah, pretty awesome. And we're going to be collecting prayers. You can put them on our Facebook page, and we're going to send them to prayers for the feast um, days coming up at the end of the month. St. Catherine Labore and the Feast of the Miraculous Medal will be at the end of the month. Um, we don't have a lot, but we know that Lizzie. Oh, I lost your sound, Denise. And Sister Denise, repeat what you just said because we lost you. To me, she's frozen. She's uh, she's being preserved right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Say something. We miss That's you. Ask the story question. Oh yeah. Okay. So story your, your question. Ask the story question. The story okay. of Saint Catherine Library. Right. Yeah. The go people, ahead. No. Oh no, no no. The 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 people from living people from different cultures can be entered. We're having a technology moment. Can you um, maybe, uh, Sister Judith, could you speak a little bit? Because you're an American, you're you've been sent there to Paris. Um, could you speak for a bit to your experience of going to Paris, where our mother house is, and you know the connection to the international community and how that's been for you uh, over the past what has it been a year or two years that you've uh, been there? Um, I'm trying um, to not count, you know, the days and the and the months and everything, but um, it's been a little bit more than a year that I've been here, and um, it's true that in addition to the international. Oh wait, we lost you again. Where's your sound, Sister Judith? There, it, I, I saw my microphone went red, but now it, you can hear me again. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to the international experience through yeah. the um, pilgrims, there's also the international experience. I, I mentioned I live with sisters from very different places, um, just within the, my local community um, currently of six sisters. All of us come from a different country and therefore a different culture. Each of us speaks a different native language. Um, and then more broadly, uh, we... Um, we speak more languages, and we also we bring all of those cultures, and we um, 
we bring our experiences from those different cultures too. And I think that um, one piece is that um, we really come to appreciate more what the community does throughout the world. It, it's something that you know in a theoretical sense, I think, when um, your main ministry is, say, working in a school or working in a parish or, or something um, in your own country and in a relatively familiar context. Um, and certainly, and even you know, part of what I do is help to relate the stories of what our sisters do throughout the world um, through translating some of that. Um, but even reading about it isn't the same as meeting sisters who have lived it. And so um, being able to uh, witness some of their testimonies and to have this, whether it's sisters who come in temporarily or whether it's sisters who come in for, who, who live here, um, I, I just have a, a broader sense of the different things that um, happen in the community of the different types of poverty because um, poverty in the United States is not the same even as in France and certainly not the same as in um, the Philippines or as in Congo or Brazil or any, anywhere else in the world. And I think that um, when I, whether it's because a sister tells me about it now or because I read about something in the news or on the internet, I, I find a much deeper connection to the situations which people are living because I, I know people now who who are part of those experiences, and I think that um, it it shapes my prayer. Um, what it is that comes into um, what I ask the Lord to to take special care of, and um, also how I how I relate to um, some some of the difficulties, the ordinary difficulties of life that um, it. It puts a different perspective on, on just about everything, and it, um, it 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 really broadens my heart. It broadens that that space of the tent, as um, the scripture says, and and gives me. A, I I know my heart is not yet at the dimensions of the heart of God, but it helps get it a little bit a little bit a little bit closer. <laughs> I think just Sister Judith, you're like a lot closer than some of us. But anyway, <laughs> now, Sister Liz, you have somebody with you, don't you? I do, right here. So in our house in Chicago, we are very blessed to have um, sisters that come to the United States to study English at DePaul University, and um, this is Sister Franceli, and she is from Guatemala. But actually, she says she's from six countries because yes. her, her <laughs> province has six countries. So tell the people, <laughs> the kids at home, tell them uh, about where you're from and how you're enjoying the United States so far. OK. My name is Sister Franceli. I am from Guatemala. And uh, my province has six, pro uh, six, six countries. And now I am studying English uh, in Chicago in the Paul University. Pretty awesome. I know it looks to me like my uh, video is out. I don't know if you guys can see us, but yeah, we're having a fun time here. And then uh, Sister Tirhas <laughs> is right here. She's going to come. Come on, girl. Get in here. Can you see her? Can you see her? Yeah. OK. So. Sister Tiras showed up in a video recently, uh, and she uh, spoke a little. Do you want to speak a little to them in your language? Tell the people how much uh, you're praying for them and how much you love them. No, in English, in your language, in Tigrinya. No. Show off you. a little. Come on now, show off a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it is better to, to speak English? English is fine. You speak whatever you want to speak. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, my name is Sister uh, Terhas. I came from Eritrea to study the English. Uh, uh, my country, uh, we have, um, uh, we are uh, 80, 90, 85 sisters. We serve it in different places of in Eritrea. We have a difference of um, service in our uh, community in Eritrea. And she's great. And she wants to give us a, a shout out to Sister uh, Nagisti, who's over there in Paris. 
So if our two Parisian sisters, if you guys can pass that along, that would be great. We'll yeah, she today, so we will. Good. We'll Thank you so much. It was good to see you both again. Yeah, you guys are good. You can go. They're they're cooking right Thank now you. in our house. Thank you. Oh, keep it in the But I'm not sure we're gonna have to. So um, we're gonna have to wrap up here. How much more time do we have? We we got maybe one yeah. more question, Sister Denise. What question do you want to ask the girls? Okay, um, we'll we'll have the sisters answer a couple of the questions on our Facebook. But tell us just real quick something funny about your international experience. Well, um, the the one of the French word for fly. I, as in fly an airplane, is uh, volé, <laughs> and the French word just for a steal, as in kill something, so volé. And one day we were talking in our group about oh, someone new had come, and we had said to her, "Don't." Someone else said to her, "Don't worry, we'll teach you to fly." But I thought they said, "Don't worry, we'll teach you to steal." So I was like, "Wait a minute! <laughs> Wait a minute! What is this?" Why are you, why are we going to do this shield? No, they, and then they had to explain it. Of course, it was when I hadn't been here very long. But, um, you know, it, it was, you know, just goofy little things like that happen all the time. Or you mispronounce something and it's like, what? It's, it's really funny. So, those kinds of things are funny. I don't know if Judith has a story yet. Uh, well, language is a very, very interesting thing. Um, one of the things that we do, maybe along kind of those same lines, is we have a mission fair for World Mission Sunday um, every October, and what, uh, so we um, highlight a little bit some of the work that we do, and we sell um, various things to the public to earn uh, money for the missions. This year, we made about twenty-five thousand euros. And one of the ways was um, they have uh, that you you go fishing, so you cast your little line and you try and get a package, and then you pay a euro to get that, and then you get a surprise. And the French word for um, fishing is pêche. Huh? So you do pêche à la ligne uh, with a, or you say je vais pêcher. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. That is also the same word, although the accent changes, but it sounds exactly the same for sin. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I, I confess my sins. It, the same, it sounds exactly the same because it phonetically is exactly the same. So there were sisters who were involved in you know, promoting this who's like, I got a lot of people to sin. <laughs> of course, there were <laughs> The fish, but they were kind of playing with that. So um, the French don't tend to find it as funny because they they it doesn't you know strike them so much that it's the same word. But for all of us who speak what we call um, quasi French, because the mother house is called the quasi province, it's not quite a province. Um, so those of us who speak quasi French, we think it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, look, we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, wrap up here, I think, right, Sister Denise? Yeah, time to go. But we'll get some of the other questions up up on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Check out the Facebook page. Feel free to comment here on the YouTube channel okay. or uh, tweet us. Whatever you want to do, get in touch with us at the Daughters of Charity US YouTube channel. And our Facebook page is Daughters of Charity Vocations US, I think. Um, so put that in the search box yeah. and you can find us. Um, we're going to close with a very special prayer. It is part of the um, Novena to the Miraculous Medal. And I'm not going to say the entire thing, but I'll say uh, the just the Novena prayer part. Uh, the Daughters of Charity, as many of you are aware, we have huge devotion to Mary in so many ways, and because St. Catherine Labore was one of our own, obviously the Miraculous Medal is a big deal for us. So 
I'm going to share this prayer with you, and there's a little pause in the middle where you can uh, kind of just speak intentions to God, things that are on your heart um, to through the intercession of Mary. And so uh, I'll pause during that piece and uh, let everybody just have a moment of, God, of time with God for that. And then a reminder that, that if you all uh, want to send some intentions on the Facebook page, we'll make sure that the sisters in Paris get those. And, uh, you know, what better place to uh, put your intentions there uh, at Rudebach in Paris. So we'll go ahead with this little closing prayer, and uh, we'll be on our way. Praise God. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. O Immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Mother, penetrated with the most lively confidence in your powerful and never-failing intercession, manifested so often through the miraculous medal, we, your loving and trustful children, implore you to obtain for us the graces and favors we ask during this novena, if they be beneficial to our mortal souls and the souls for whom we pray. Obtain for us, O Immaculate Virgin Mary, a deep hatred of sin and that purity of heart which will attach us to God alone, so that our every thought, word, and deed may tend to his greater glory. Obtain for us also a spirit of prayer and self-denial, so that we may recover by penance what we have lost by sin, and at length attain to that blessed abode, where you are a queen of angels and of all. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you. Amen. All right, everybody. It's been great um, to have you all with us today. Uh, again, keep in touch. Daughters of Charity, we're awesome. We love you guys. You're in our prayers. All right. Bye, everybody.